can a movie poster help make or break the success of a movie? Or is it just another marketing tool that nerds on the internet make lame podcast episodes about? Tonight, we pit top-rated movie posters for some of the worst movies ever made. Right now, on Deep Fat Fried. Deep Fat Fried! Let's Top do it. movie posters versus worst movies ever made. So at first, I mean, like, so obviously we all know the Shawshank Redemption. It's IMDb rating 9.2, 2.3 million ratings. Terrible. Pretty film. much. I mean, terrible movie, of course. But is the poster part of a success? So, I'll, I, you know, I kind of found doing research on this episode. I was kind of divided. I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, shit movies can have good posters. Great so, movies can have horrible posters. Uh, This one here, I don't think is an especially great poster, but I think it at least gives you a sense of the movie. Fear can hold you prisoner. Hope can set you free. Tim Robbins, Morgan Freeman, the Shawshank. One of the uh, coming this fall. Most powerful shots in the movie to taken for the poster here, which is kind of a spoiler, though. Uh, It kind of is. Yeah, but it's, you know, he I mean, I guess you can't see the I guess you don't really know the context of this fucking moment or whatever. Well, the moment it would be impactful if he just got out after, you know, five minutes in jail. You know what I mean? The movie opens with him escaping prison. How did he do it? Find out. Dude, when I was a kid, I used to think years earlier, I used to think that he that he was twisted around backwards. Like his like his body was twisted around backwards on his Uh waist. If you look yeah. at him, it looks like like from the waist down, it looks like he's kind of bending forward, you know, but the other way. Yeah. And so when I was a kid, I thought that he was dead, like something happened to him. <laughs> you thought he was like all fucked up. Yeah, yeah. It, it can almost be a horror thing if you look at it that way. It's like, oh, my God, what's happening to him? Well, it was written by Stephen King, which oddly enough, they didn't really push that in the marketing uh, of the film at all. And then it says um, fear it right at the top, too. It's like, fear can hold me. I was just like, oh, shit, man. This guy got fucking... He's killed. Uh, this movie didn't do big box office when it came out. We already covered that on another episode. But, you know, it did reasonably well, and obviously it's gone on to just I mean, be it's a favorite. Su- its success has been pretty enduring, so... Yeah, I mean, maybe not the box office, but every other metric possible... Just, just a movie that, like, you know, it's very rare to find someone who hasn't seen this movie or at least heard of it, even if you're not into movies at all. Uh, so, uh, what do you guys rate this poster? I think it's a good poster in the middle. I kind of put this one, I mean, even though it's a pretty good movie, I, I'd say it's a middle-of-the-pack kind of poster, but it's I mean, still decent. It just, I don't know, it steals from the, it just steals a, like a, a good frame from the movie. It is kind of spoilery. So yeah, I'd say it's like a half ass poster. They could have definitely done a better poster for the Shawshank Redemption than this. But not up against stiff competition, remember? So let's see it's, it's competition. Uh, disaster movie. Your okay. favorite Shawshank movies are, are going to be destroyed. <laughs> Uh, it's IMDb rating 1.9, 80,000 ratings. 1.9. Like. You haven't yet. Wait, I just want you to understand something. Do you know how bad a movie has to be to have a 1.9 on IMDb? It's probably got to be pretty bad. I'd imagine. I have it's seen got to be a disaster movie. I have seen movies that are absolute unwatchable dog shit that three or four they have like threes on imdb most like, movies that suck fall into the three or four range let's put it right. that way this is a movie that is especially horrible uh and it's cover i mean it's poster really just yeah it tells you what you need to know if, if, if you actually walked up to a movie theater at the time looked at this poster and said yes you deserve your fate yeah i think i want to see this want to see a really shitty parody of like good movies yeah Oh, here you go. It's disaster movie. So we can see just kind of like a frumpy Batman, a low rent Iron Man. They're making fun of Hellboy, uh, Juno, just any movie that was popular around this time period. Is that a little black midget (laughs) Indiana Jones in the front? Yep, it is. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it's not all bad, I guess. Just remember the movie sucks, Paul. The movie sucks. It's one, got a 1.9 on IMDb. I mean, Paul. look, Paul, I know you're getting back in the review game soon. So, I mean, if you really want to see a disastrous I pa- movie. I know where your mind's at, Paul, because I saw that, too. And I was like, I kind of want to see that little midget be Indiana Jones. 
I wasn't gonna say it. But I mean, that's how I feel too. I, mean, I look at it. I'm like that. Look, a lot of people probably got fucking. I can just watch his scene, you know. Uh, a lot of people look uh, with YouTube now. You probably can, but back in the day, TJ, you had to go and pay for the ticket. You had to sit through the entire thing to get the little black midget Indiana Jones scene. And look, if you want to ask that, there's a payoff to that. Uh, IMD rating, DB rating of one point nine. So it's, it's up to you. It's up to you. Uh, overall, though, this poster is garbage. It's just they took a bunch of people from the cast, they put them in a the fucking poster. They made it look like, look like a disaster in the background, and they have a really shitty font. It's garbage. It loses. Well, you know what? I will I will say it loses, unless you guys want to make a case for it. I will make, make disaster I'm willing movie. to make a case okay, for this go poster. Ahead. I'll, I'll, then let's hear it. I'm going to make a case for this fucking poster here. What, Black Midget Indiana Jones? Is that your case? No. I'm going to say, hey, here's what? the case. It tells you more about the movie you're about to see than, uh, than the other one did. See, look. So this movie, Paul thought this guy was twisted and contorted in a horrible fucking nightmare. You like this? You don't know what the fuck this. Unless you've seen the movie, you don't know this is like a hopeful moment or what the fuck's going on here. Okay. But if you do know this moment, this fucking totally gives away shit. So I which mean, one? Okay. So you're saying if you I'm walked saying, up you know, and you see Shawshank Redemption, you see Disaster Movie, you're walking a Disaster Movie. I'm. What I'm saying is, is this, well, that, that's my argument if here. The, uh, if that's my that, that's well, what we're wait. basing it on. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. It's my fucking episode, bitch. So that's the fucking criteria. If you would walk up to Disaster Movie and say, yes, I'd pick that over Shawshank or definitely, right. that's fine. Well, in that sense, I can't say it's a better poster. But in the sense that it tells me, it gives me a better idea about the movie you're about to see. Like, if you look at this, you know exactly what you're in for. <laughs> You look at this. You How don't. do you ca- capture the Shawshank, the message of the Shawshank Redemption in the poster? I don't know. Disaster movie pulled it off. Obviously, more competent poster makers over at Disaster oh, Movie's whatever. art department. Get the fuck out of here, TJ, with that bullshit. I don't fucking believe that for a second. <laughs> uh, here's the uh, poster for Pulp Fiction. Uh, great poster. I mean, it's like designed to look like a, a fucking. Yeah, it's actually designed to look like a pulp magazine. Right. Um, you have fucking Uma Thurman on the front, you know, looking sexy, got some cleavage, got, got some legs. Obviously, Tarantino's got a thing for feet. I mean, so got feet are feet. pretty prominent. You got, you got there. everything. Ten, it's only 10 cents, too. You got the little 10 cent thing. You got the fake kind of wear and tear to kind of show that this is it's old. And, this is, and, I, and I and every time here, I want to point out to people that I went for the original poster that I could find. And this is like from a site where you can buy it. I think they want like three or four hundred bucks if you want an original Pulp Fiction poster. Yeah. So obviously this is a pretty fucking good poster. It actually, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it just looks like a beat up old pulp magazine, which is kind of the whole idea, right? I remember a lot of people just wanting this poster too. So it it had a life of its own as well. Even if you're not a huge fan of the movie, people just love the fucking poster. Quentin Tarantino was just like on point in his career at this time. And like, this is really what launched him. So, I mean, shit, you, don't you have a Pulp Fiction poster? Or you you did for years, TJ. Mm, I think I don't. I don't think I have it anymore, but I used to have yeah, it. Yeah, you did for years. Let's see what it's up against. <laughs> Kirk Cameron saving uh, Christmas. So clear knockout here. Kirk Cameron definitely wins. This is definitely not a ripoff poster of any movie any of us have ever seen. I mean, this one at least has some motion to it. You know what I mean? Ugh. Yeah, yeah it so does. I will say for this poster, like taking my hatred of Kirk Cameron and my hatred of this fucking movie out of the equation. I mean, you see in the up front what uh, Kirk Cameron wants actually worships uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so you see, candy, like candy, apparently hundred dollar bills. Flutter around. You actually don't really see much religion here. You like, see a Christmas tree. He's holding an orb cane. of religion. The orb of religion yeah. is in his head. There's a tiny little. Yeah, but it's like that's it. Like. Way more space, like there's more space op- occupied by these two hundred dollar bills than there is by this little orb. So what is there. implied by this movie is like Kurt Cameron gonna like show up at your family Christmas and mollywop you with a giant cane. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it really does kind of look like he's coming to fucking <laughs> slap that cane candy cane right upside your fucking I'll, head. I'll Are you telling me that at Kurt Cameron's house? Which like- honestly is kind of. On, once again, uh, this poster is honest about the cinematic experience you could fucking expect. Yeah, he's coming for you. He's about to beat the shit out of you with this fucking shitty message of Christianity. Because it really does he's feel coming. like getting beat, walloped over the head with a fucking candy cane. I'll be honest with you. Like, that's not. <laughs> well, most of this movie takes place in a car. <laughs> no. So any any action that's implied or, or is it a yeah. house or whatever? It's well, no, I mean, it's they're at. A, OK, so the movie is this. They're at a Christmas party, right? There's a guy there that's fucking grumpy. I don't fucking believe the Christmas has become too commercialized, whatever. 
Of course. Cameron fucking pulls him out. It's like, oh, talk to him. And the movie is Kirk Cameron and the fucking grumpy guy in a car talking. That's like 80% of the movie. Is Lame. That, yeah. Flame as fuck. And it cuts so he back doesn't to- bust up in somebody's house and kill their whole family with a fucking bludgeon no. candy cane? No. He doesn't wield I the wish. orb of religion against the fucking worshipers of fucking Baal and Mammon? No. Sorry. No. He doesn't curb stomp anybody while a hundred dollar bill floats by. If I remember, he pretty much says it's permissible as long as religion is like the theme of it. Like, it's okay to gather with friends and family and tell them how much you love them. But as long as the main focus is Jesus. That's so basically just a religious grifter movie. Uh, total ripoff, though, because let's take a look here. Whoa. Oh, man. What a douche. Yeah, so any credit you were going to give this movie, you have to take away immediately because it's a ripoff of Last Action Hero, which you, did, you recently just watched. Yeah. Dude, and, they uh, just, we're in L.A. They replaced the little kid with the orb of religion. <laughs> yeah, that's all they did. They replaced the fucking skis of that helicopter with a big giant candy cane. And you know what? I bet they thought like, hey, this is kind of like an homage. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah. An homage. Oh, what, no mosh an actually gr- good movie. No, this sucks. Oh, my God. That's lo- that's so lame, dude. It's a low blow, dude. You fucking re- I mean, uh, look, if you're going to steal from anybody, James Cameron is as good as anyone to steal from. By the way, last uh, this last action hero has a way cooler poster because it, it actually. Does. But uh, I will say, though, last action hero doesn't even deserve a fucking poster this good because that movie is fucking barely watchable. It's not even so bad. Compared to saving Christmas, though, I mean, oh, I'd watch last action yeah, fucking 10 that, times in a that's row. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like. But uh, you know, also, Last Action Hero is a present pretty good poster. It actually shows what the movie's about. So it's literally yeah. Arnold and this kid jumping uh, out of the fucking screen at you. Good poster. Uh, but Kirk Cameron tried to rip it off, tried to defeat Pulp Fiction. I don't think there's any case. If you guys want to argue for Kirk Cameron saving Christmas, go ahead. But well, we're not. Remember, we're not judging him against Last Action Hero. No, I understand that. I'm saying which, but which movie are you going to go see? That's we're my judging question. him against. Pulp Fiction. So, you know, let's just say for the sake of argument, Pulp Fiction and uh, I mean, it, Saving so, Christmas come so out wait, the same so time. The contention here is you arrive at the, basically you arrive at the movie theater, you don't know shit about these movies. The only thing you you know is yeah, this you know poster. Nothing. There's this poster. Yeah. And there's this What's, poster. Back in the day, that's kind of how movies were seen a lot of times by people. I mean, now it's different social so media. So if you were to make a decision just based on the poster, would I rather go see Saving Christmas based on this poster or Pulp Fiction based on that poster? Yeah. Well, that poster had titties and a gun. This poster has Kirk Cameron. So. <laughs> and a candy cane. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you know. I'm kind of in the same boat, yeah. I don't think there's much contest. There wasn't really meant to be. This is Let's a better. That this is a better poster than it has a right to be, but only because it ripped yeah. off a better poster. But maybe there's a maybe there's a poster out there for a shit movie that's going to top a good movie. Okay, fair enough. Let's see. But the Empire Strikes Back. This no. is one of the original posters. I mean, this is like the, when you asked earlier, like how do you tell <laughs> the story of the Shawshank Redemption or whatever the fuck in a poster without giving it away? Some like this, you know, like really really artistically done paintings of key moments in the film showing you a little taste of what's to come foreshadowing the villain and the air battles uh, yeah, love, and everything this is a I great fucking poster Darth Vader in the background just looming over everything yeah it's a, it's oh, a great poster I, I was telling Taylor it's like dude I want to get so hardcore into these old movie poster collections because I just love them I love seeing all the different posters like especially the, like these British quad posters I didn't pull any for this episode but they got some amazing posters just from all over the world well you know this fucking this poster one of the things that strikes me about it is like how much of the space they just kind of let be like negative space you know yeah it's like there's like a a big sort of like block of stuff like uh you know this whole area here you know what's how that they used to do them back in like 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 this is like uh, it was the printing style and the technology they use i forget what it is so i don't want to butcher it but it was just it was done a different process than obviously they do now cool you know a little bit more expensive to do i'm sure is why they switched to different methods or just technology advanced whatever but you see here that like Han and Leia's romance is going to advance. You see Vader looming in the shadows. You see Luke riding fucking. I mean, you know, it's a Tauntaun now, but like you don't fucking know that seeing this. And of course, this is really from that era, too. So like this is like you're going to walk up and see a movie and it's like 1980 uh, or whenever this this looks like a pretty good movie. And of course, you have the saga continues. Yeah, like this. It's like, look, if you haven't seen the first one, see the fucking first one. 
I mean, ever, I mean, I mean, this, is, this is designed for people who fucking saw Star Wars and be like, holy shit. All right. So what are we comparing against? <laughs> the fuck out of town, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, this movie, I've reviewed this movie for when I was fucking doing the whole um, uh, uh, distress watcher thing a million years yeah, ago. Yeah, Rotten Tomato rating 0%. By the way, uh, The Empire this Strikes Back, 8.7, 1.2 million ratings. Mm-hmm. Just ugh. Ballistic X versus Sever is one of the fucking most unwatchably terrible. Like, Lucy Liu is awful, as she almost always is. Dude, no, She's no, no, even no. more dead Wrong. than normal. Wrong? Okay. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Antonio Banderas how. does his best work as uh, the assassin X, uh-huh. and Lucy Liu is rarely better. Maybe better in the Kill Bill franchise, but really shows up and shines as Jinghua Sever, the uh, counter <laughs> assassin. Jinghua, Jinghua Sever. Sever. <laughs> Shut up, Paul. You, Paul, you, you probably haven't even seen this fucking Dude, piece of shit. I've seen so this it. post it's just trash. I'm just. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this poster is garbage. Uh, these yeah, characters the look like garbage. Shit. I think the movie's garbage and it's tainting. Like the poster is no. okay. Well, here's why I don't like the poster. Because right. it looks the the fucking. They look this, washed out. Yeah, it has this washed out blue filter over them. There's nothing going on in the background. Well, clearly it was pulled from the film itself. Uh, yeah, and the resolution don't look good. Maybe that's just the quality of the image Scotty pulled. I, I mean, don't know. How many people do you think preserve Ballistic X for right. Sever shit? So, I mean, I, I guess I know. I mean, it's kind of like hard because I've seen both these movies and I know that one is good and one sucks. But like this is like an artistically rendered, beautiful fucking thing. Yeah. This looks like trash. Now, sometimes a movie that is trash in the way this movie is trash can be good in a trash way. But this looks actually fucking good. Yeah, so, one's like a work of art. One is like we need to put something up. For the movie, you know, I mean, shit. like a movie that has this poster, this ballistic X versus Sever poster could be a good movie. Like it could be like a good little popcorn action flick or whatever the fuck. I'm not saying it couldn't, but like it's not an impressive poster. It's pretty fucking generic. It's just two. It's just two characters posing. Don't even look like they're necessarily in the same fucking place. You're I mean, most if dangerous you have, enemies. If you have oh, a ahead. good buddy cop movie or a duo movie or something like a poster like this in my world is acceptable because i you know they're they're they're, it's the hero shot they're giving you like a a little hero shot here so no like i'm trying to go by scotty's rules you don't know shit about these movies yeah you don't know shit about it yeah fair enough i'm still (laughs) probably gonna go see empire strikes back but i don't think ballistic now the name of the fucking goddamn movie (laughs) that's really the thing I mean, you look at if you. Well, that's something you can take into account too. You're gonna say a ballistic <laughs> X versus Sever. You're gonna be like, who All the right. fuck is X and who the fuck's what? What is this? Let's say you arrive, you know nothing. You see this poster. Yeah. The Empire Strikes Back. Ballistic X versus Sever. I just don't think I'm gonna fucking have that come out of my mouth. Personally, I'm going Empire Strikes Back. I don't yeah. know. It doesn't even flow. It's just like whatever. If it had a better, it maybe it was called Ballistic. Generic. If it was Ballistic, maybe you could get me in there. Maybe like, oh, you know, I'm feeling like an action movie. Yeah. Ballistic. Well, that's another thing. Is like, does this? Does anything about this say to you Ballistic? No. Like I would maybe expect they explosions. About to go Ballistic. I mean, yeah, but do they look like they're about to go Ballistic? Kinda. Mm. Lucy Liu looks like she's about to unleash hell, you know? I do not like her. I've never liked her in any goddamn thing. You don't, like, you don't even like her in fucking Kill Bill? She's okay as O-Ren, I guess. Uh, Only Quentin can make uh, her palatable. Seven Samurai. Uh, seven Samurai. Uh, so this is actually original. I actually do have this poster somewhere. I do not think you have the Seven Samurai 1954 poster from Japan. Well, though. I don't have... Going I at mean, auction, I, uh, I they, have a replica of this. They poster. estimate it to go from seven to ten thousand uh, British pounds. Fine, I have a replica of this poster. Then I don't have this. This is incredibly incredible poster. This is an incredibly uh, a rare item to find. I mean, you're talking about like you know post World War II Japan, basically. Looks like his dick's about to bobble out and fucking piss on all those little people riding underneath him too. <laughs> So this, is not, so this is actually more. This is actually instead of looking at it's like just exclusively American or Western posters, we're gonna look at a little Japanese poster. Obviously, uh, to show Mafune front and center here. This kind of compositing that they're doing is is a lot harder in this era too. These are like paintings, but they don't look like they were painted at the same time. They look like a bunch of different paintings that were kind of like put together. You can do a close up. Paintings, dude. They're pictures. Oh yeah, you're right. 
No, well, no, that horse is definitely painted. They trimmed out the goddamn fucking people. I'm not really sure what they've movie. done. Some of this looks painted, and some of it looks. This, this is like some we kind can, of mixed uh, media creation. We can here. actually look at. They might have some, uh, the, the auction house might have information about the poster too. If you guys are curious, I am interested in how they made this because some of it looks like photos. Well, that's, and some it. that's what gives it like the painted view. Oh, you're right. You're totally right. It was like that's probably what it is. Yeah, it was black and white shit that was colorized by painting. Yep. But pretty neat. Definitely tells you a story. Uh, so it says unframed. Blah, uh, scroll down a little bit. So I want to see if there's any information. If it was an artist. Oh, you want to scroll down here? Uh, so it just, tell it you just says Kira that Kira Kira was okay. fucking celebrated director and shit. Doesn't really tell you much about the creation of the post or anything. But you can buy it, it for should. seven to ten thousand GPBs. What's the estimate? That's the estimate of what's going to go for if it hasn't already sold. How come I can't place a bid, Scotty? How come I can't place a I fucking bid? I don't know. I don't know. Or the <laughs> adventures of Pluto. By the Nash. way, uh, seven samurai rating, eight point six out of three hundred twenty-five thousand ratings on IMDb. And how about the adventures of Pluto Nash? A Rotten Tomato rating of four percent, not zero this time, but four. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to find because movie was such a flop and was actually pulled from theaters. But yeah, this is actually a theatrical release of the poster. You mainly find the DVD. Uh, yet again, Eddie Murphy front and center, really trying to sell him. The other characters in the middle, I don't. Even He's think- kind of back and center, honestly. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of stuff in, in he's front backing of him. A, he's backing away of the, from the movie um, it's just clearly like a photo of the, he did like a promotional photo and they probably sh- they probably would have been better off just using that photo of him for their poster instead of cramming all this other garbage in there because it looks terrible yeah, he looks bored um, I think that they probably would have been better off just having him standing there in that goofy outfit rather than trying to cram all this other shit in there that looks like a fucking Sean Connery looking rip off fucking dude. There's like flying cars, now, curtain shit. You never hear this talked about. Here's the movie's tagline. Action's future has arrived. Oh my yeah. God. Dude. Yeah. 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 I'm seeing this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Fucking seven samurai fan, but that dude pooping in his diaper and a bunch of people running around with a bunch what? of shit. I can't read or this with Eddie Murphy in a laser suit. He's going to fucking Pluto. Oh, I'm fair seeing enough. This shit. I mean, so I'll have Paul, to tell you, uh, Paul's voting for Pluto Nash. I mean, hey. I mean, well, the reason I'd have it's, uh, it's okay. Ba- it's based on like remember, like, like we're comparing posters, so this is the marketing. So you don't know so you anything about you the see, movie. Yeah. You show up, so and this is show showing, up, and that show. You're not some a character. So if I show uh, up, fanatic, you just you're you're walking by, and this theater happens to have this movie, Seven Samurai. Right, I get it. We all get it. But the problem is this movie. There's nothing on English on this poster, so like I'm probably gonna be like I'm not. If I go see this movie, I'm not gonna understand what's going on because it's like I don't even know if this is subtitled. okay. Well, the, the conceit is it's, it's subtitled. How about that? So then this would have to be a poster that. So this poster, but it, the words are in English, basically. Yeah, so I and they, know and they exist. But I was going with the original poster. Okay. Because if I go see that, if I go, if I'm with the, choose between this and this, I'm gonna be like I'm gonna see the movie that's gonna be in the language I understand. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm way more interested in what this crazy fuck is up to than Eddie Murphy looking fucking bored out of his fucking mind. <laughs> Dude, he doesn't look bored. He looks wistful. TJ, he wistful. does not look. He looks fucking bored. He's he got looks one like he's eyebrow like, up. Yeah, he's kind of doing the rock thing. It's he's not pulling it off. And then <laughs> whatever the fuck this guy is, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This just, I just I have a fucking nose for this kind of fucking garbage, and I just know that this is trash just at a fucking glance. Well, uh. We at least have one vote for Pluto Nash. I don't know that I necessarily like this poster. I mean, yeah, I'm not in love with this poster, but I'd probably be more inclined I think to see this. I think it's got like period a, pieces. I just the, the thing that would probably suck me in is the thing that repels Paul. This dude in a diaper with his crazy ass fucking ah face going on fascinates me more than fucking Eddie Murphy. At least this uh, no, dude, cock-eye. Eddie, dude, Eddie. Come on, it's Eddie. Come on, it's Eddie. But if I'm if I actually arrive and saw this poster and this poster, I'm going with this one just because it's fucking in English. So well, hey, I don't not, speak fucking I'll speak Japanese. Whatever so. they speak in Japan, I would not recognize that as Japanese on site. So I'd just be like, this is a foreign movie that I don't even know if it's translated because there's nothing in English on the poster. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hitchcock Psycho. Psycho, a new and altogether different screen excitement. That is the lamest tagline I've ever fucking heard in my life. Yeah, not great. Um, Definitely a, a very stylized and dated to the time period. This looks very 60s. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so you get there. Uh, so you know there's Titty. 
front and center. Like there's titty in this movie, right? There's she's wearing the a titty. bra, you know. And this is like you know you're you're seeing this in 1960 or whatever. So yeah, you're definitely um, you know you're getting some titties here. And I mean, Psycho is just like compelling fucking title, you know. And this, the, the title fact is actually like the title font and the weird ripping and tearing effect yeah. that they've done is more interesting than the poster itself. So I feel like I don't really understand. I feel like these two red dudes shouldn't even fucking be here. Like, I feel like get rid of that. Make the psycho thing a little bigger. Stuff this these words somewhere else. Keep the titties in there. Keep the titties for yeah, sure. I mean, of course. If you guys had cut that, I'd be like, you know, cut you guys. Uh, uh, I'm going to be rating 8.5, 624,000. How about let's put up against the psycho remake? Dude, this is a way better poster. It rips Check off in. the original one with the ripped Max. psycho. Take so you know what? It, this poster actually just take takes the advice that we just gave. Yeah, it does. It keeps it keeps titty, but and it keeps the fucking cool psycho thing with the font and everything. But it gets rid of all the dorky dudes and shit. You don't see all that shit. It yeah, stuffs it's the text. One it's a pretty compelling poster because you see it, it's kind of like that blood red on the bottom, and like you know, it's like she's in the shower naked. Well, look but at it's the, and plus better tagline too. Check in, relax, take a shower. Which, not, you know, not, definitely not as good as the original as far as the movies are concerned, but this is a this is a better poster. I like this one. This uh, one gets I my would, vote. If I had to see, I mean, like, I would be confused why there's two movies with the same title and logo, but I'd be like, I want to see the one that has that poster associated. I mean, like, how would I even choose between the two? I, one for Psycho, please. <laughs> Which one? There's two <laughs> movies. They have the identical plot, but one has different. I, I didn't say it was a flawless premise; just that was the premise. I would choose this poster over that poster. I can tell you that. Yeah, do you want to see the original Psycho or the remake? How about that? I would rather. I mean, knowing what I know, I'd rather see the original. But based on posters alone, I'll see this one. How about sex versus uneasiness? No, I just love this poster, dude. This poster like made me just afraid of this movie. Like I remember, like I remember looking at this as a kid, and I was like, nope. I'm I'm just too frightened to see this. I like, don't like the white matting that it's fucking put up against. Uh, I mean, I don't like really mind it. Style of movie poster yeah. and shit. Yeah, this is this is the original 1979 poster. For so it. Alien, right? I mean, cool cons. I mean, like it's a very simple poster. It tells you exactly. I mean, you see an egg. You see fucking best tagline ever. Too. Light coming out. Yeah, no, space, no one can hear you. I scream. mean, it's it's gonna be hard to be best. Tag, as far as taglines go. That's fucking top now. I mean, this almost doesn't get Eight, any better so than that. That's I'm probably top on this 10 one. tagline. 8.4, 814,000 ratings. Just a classic You movie. got this creepy mesh down here. Not a fan of this white matting that it's wow, up against, garbage, but whatever. I'm, that's how the posters were done back then. I want to tell you, man. What showgirls? Showgirls. So, cool poster. Uh, leave your inhibitions at the door. The show is about... So this one's going to depend on... How horny am I? Who am I with and how horny am I? Yeah, yeah so I'm to be rated on this one 4.9, 64,000. Uh, really controversial at the time. NC 17 rated film. Uh, because so, uh, dude, if you watch if the trailer I, for this, it's like they they have to basically uh, <laughs> they have to be very selective because most of this movie, everyone is naked. I'm going to see Showgirls. You know, so, oh, okay. Because I'm going to uh, I'm going to see this poster, right? And then I'm going to look down there and I'm going to see NC 17. And you're seeing a lot here. You're, I mean, just barely. I mean, like this poster alone is basically just telling me, like, you're gonna see all kinds of naked bitches. I mean, in this I'm gonna movie. see Showgirls yes. too because I'm not allowed to know anything about the movies, but that doesn't mean I can't know who's in them. And this is fucking no? Jesse from Saved by the Bell, dude. Right, and it's like you get to see Jesse from Saved by the Bell flopping her titties and ass all hey. around. Sex does sell, so I mean, look, you guys walk up, you can see aliens, see Showgirls. Paul, should you buy a ticket to Showgirls? Yeah, I'm, Sorry. Just, I'm too, you know, it's it, and it's a I really, mean, like, to be honest with you, it's a great poster. Shows off the sexy, like, lines of a woman's body without revealing anything you can't show on a poster. It's a good poster. I mean, they had to be creative. That's one thing with Showgirls. It was really creative how they had to market it because it's like, what can you really show from the movie? <laughs> it's not a great movie. It's a horribly acted movie, but <laughs> I don't no know. One's what... going, no one was going to see it for that reason. Anyways, no one give a fuck about the plot. Directed want... by Another thing, if I if I scrutinize this poster more, I would recognize the name of Paul Verhoeven too, and I'd be like, "Whoa, Paul yes. Verhoeven, oh, yes, yeah, Paul Verhoeven, that's true. RoboCop, and fucking all, yeah, 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 yeah. sex sells." So I mean, I'll, uh, one, uh, two for showgirls, I guess. Hey, 
basically guess because me and Paul are fucking horn dogs. Though, well, so. whatever. I, I mean, what like that's it is what it is. You ask. Let's end with a uh, couple animated. All right. So yet again. Uh, now, look, guys, last time I let you weasel out, the conceit is, you know, look, I pulled the original, but it's the American version. Of gotcha. This. So ignore the foreign. Yeah, so language don't say, shit. oh, I don't know. I can't read it. So based just on imagery. So there's a fucking wolf. This is Princess Mononoke. There's if you're a, wondering. It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, a girl in 1997. She's dressed up fucking in wolf fucking outfit. She's got some fangs on her necklace. She's got some blood on her fucking mouth. She's got a fucking dagger. There should be some. If there should be blood on her mouth, there should be blood on that fucking like, dagger. This too. one, like anime shit, is hard for me. And this one, like, doesn't have an aesthetic that immediately turns me off. It doesn't look like she's like a magic schoolgirl, um, who discovers that she has a power or some shit. It looks like there's some brutal, crazy shit going on in this one. So this is a pretty good poster. I guess. This is a more environmental one. This is probably uh, Miyazaki's most mainstream film that he ever did. Um, emoji movie. So, I'm gonna see the other one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and like, it's not even. I don't even really think that it has a great poster, but just like the concept of this alone is just like repellent and abhorrent to me. Just like and the lazy. idea that I would watch a movie about fucking emojis. Like, I would rather go into the fucking parking lot of the movie theater, <laughs> find a fucking car idling. And put my mouth up against the fucking tailpipe <laughs> and inhale that shit until I'm fucking either passed out high or dead. How about this, TJ? An adventure beyond words. Fuck you. Fuck off. I will go see the one about the wolf girl with the. Yeah, I'm blood voting on for Princess Mon. Okay. Uh, I mean, look, like I said, the deck is rigged in this one. I don't think anyone's going to pick it. But Paul, are you going to see Emoji Movie? No. Okay. <laughs> not even devil's advocate like paul's like no i wasn't even no. going i couldn't even think of a way to joke about this one being more interesting i don't blame you uh well that's all we have for today folks. i like that concept of an episode i liked putting up of the fucking good movie poster against the shitty movie poster and seeing which one had the better fucking and sometimes poster. the uh the lesser movie came out on top yeah i was surprised good on you i do not i'm I don't hate I think Gus there were, you know, dude, fucking I think remake there of Psycho, dude. Where, I think there were some times where TJ fucking cheated, dude. I think there were some I times did. where he was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick the Kurosawa right, one, though, no, because did you, I don't want to see what's going on with that guy there in the middle. Yeah. I mean, he, dude, he looks more interesting than fucking Eddie Murphy no, with that fucking look on his face. Nothing Eddie Murphy was more so interesting past than time. Eddie Murphy. If, Eddie Murphy was all cod piece, then maybe. If that if I was walking in the movie theater in nineteen eighty something and saw that poster, I'd be like, oh shit, Eddie Murphy, he's funny as fuck. But two thousand Eddie Murphy, but no. yeah, by then Eddie Murphy was not a fucking seal of quality anymore. So uh no. No, no, no. <laughs> fuck that shit. Anyway, cool idea, cool episode. We could easily do more, I'm sure. Let us of know course. in the comments below if you want to see more. Bye bye. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's your old pal Mickey here with a direct order. I mean an option that you are strongly encouraged to take advantage of. You will click the link below. You will subscribe to the Pessimist Productions Patreon. I mean, (laughs) if you wanna, wink wink, there's more content there than, well, you could swing a dead toddler at exclusive shows, exclusive streams, hours of exclusive content. Why aren't you clicking? Why aren't you subscribing to the Pessimist Productions Patreon? <laughs> You're making Mickey sad. Deep